So in this phase that what we are going to see is that the compliance officer's responsibility as far as the creating the awareness across the organization with regard to the compliance of, of pit regulations, especially in case of designated persons, about the disclosures, what they have to give, about the how they have to conduct themselves while dealing with the securities of the company, especially in case of window closures, especially in case of contract trades, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So today we are going to discuss regulation 6789. And uh, Dr. Sarita uh, from our uh, form is going to make the presentation. And uh, I give a pause here. And after that, uh, I request Professor Bala and then uh, Rajendra to share their views before Dr. Sarita starts her presentation. Then we will go on discussing it further. Thank you. Yes, Bala. Good morning to all of you. It's really, really a pleasure of uh, having these seminars where we share the knowledge and get the experience, practical experience and insight of the people, expert people who are actually in the field and joining it. To that extent, I am very grateful to Rajendra as well because he will definitely share his practicality and experience in the Qatar which I will have. Another thing is this with regulations when we are talking about it, you all may be knowing, we all aware, because in the past also, there have been a lot of news items and channels which was there involving various companies. I think one famous case was CE Telefilm, then Abuja Simmons and Deep Industries. All these cases were there. Basically, these are all arising out of the disclosure. So when we talk about the disclosure, as Sudhakar puts it, it is definitely, definitely the compliance officer, basically the company secretary professional responsibility so the company secretary responsibility is not only having the regulation in place, but making the regulation known to the people across all the connected people and ensuring that this adherence is actually done in the true spirit and ultimately ensuring the compliance, which is ultimate goal of the company secretary. The company secretary is actually the very, very, you know, tight rope walking situations. Because he has to take care of all the compliances, he has to protect the interests of all the people, he has to take care of everything. That is the way we are there. And today, the disclosure requirement, when we are talking about, there are various things. We have the PIT regulation has been amended continuously from 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. Very frequent amendment has come, new formats have been actually introduced. Not only that, time again, the regulator has been actually issuing press releases and clarification notes, etc. and all these things. So really, really speaking, when we go through the regulation, we are also required to see the various clarification notes which are issued in conjunction with that we need to do, we need to implement the thing. That is a part of it. I am very sure Dr. Sarita today is going to definitely, definitely enlighten us on this aspect of the disclosure, starting from initial disclosure, continual disclosure, people who are supposed to disclose. Suraj, I think, can you mute your mic, please? Suraj, yeah. So Dr. Sarita will be definitely taking us on the disclosure aspect of it, coupled with the fair code of conduct as well. And Rajendra will, of course, share his practical experience with an expert today on our webinar. Over to Rajendra, you can share your thoughts on the topic, please. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Professor Bala, Sudhakar, Dipti, uh, Disha, and everyone at Meta and Meta for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, you know, when I look back, when I started my career in 1997, uh, the PIT regulation of that time and the PIT regulation of today. You know, that was a time when you could have lay, one could have laid down just a regulation, uh, just a code. They could have just one trading window closure for the quarterly result, and then some PI, you know, PCT approvals, and that's all. That and then disclosures which are required to be filed. And it was a part-time job for one person, maybe in a week if somebody spent some two, three hours. It was sufficient to ensure full compliance of the law. Uh, regulator continues to face the challenge of leakage of the UPSI, and they continue to work on the strengthening of the regulation. There have been multiple amendments. There were multiple uh, amendments in 1992 regulation. 
there were committees which was formed to evaluate and finally after sodi committee's report 2015 regulation was laid down and even after that there have been multiple significant changes which has come out in the regulation which means if we see the comparative you know uh, complexity of the compliance from say 2 to 3 hours a week now we spend almost one full person full day on these compliance and these compliances are nothing else but the compliances of regulation 6 regulation 8 regulation 9 the code of conduct the pct approval etc etc and this is the significance of today's you know uh, workshop or a discussion how do we ensure that the disclosures are proper the approvals are proper the code of conduct is proper the board the audit committee the ceo the compliance officer are properly protected from any regulatory exposure and they are you know they are able to demonstrate that there are reasonable policies there are reasonable controls and processes and there are due compliance of the statutory provision this is what we are going i think we are going to discuss today we will also discuss the jurisprudence that how the regulatory environment and regulators are you know uh, looking at the regulation how they are addressing the challenges which they are facing and what is the changes which are going to come in the regulations and how these changes are going to impact us i think we are going to discuss all of these in today's workshop so over to you sarika i'll pause here okay so good morning and welcome you all in this five weeks extensive knowledge dissemination sebi pit webinar series organized by our team meta and meta Today we are going to deliberate the regulation six, seven, eight, nine. That is disclosures and codes under PIT regulation and its implications on the stakeholders. So mainly we are uh, eager to listen from the panelists, and I'm sharing my screen now to proceed with the regulation six. This is a general provisions given in the regulation six. every public disclosure under chapter 3 of this regulation shall made in such a form as may be specified so some specification is given in this pit regulation some forms as is given uh, this uh, regulation so public disclosures mean the disclosures required to be made to the company and then in turn by the company to the stock exchanges now so sebi has notified the formats in the relevant disclosures have to be made and the specimen formats are discussed at the appropriate appropriate places in this instance chapters so form a b c d form a now is not there but b c d all the forms is specifically mentioned in regulation 6 so this is general provision moving towards the regulation 6 2 the disclosures to be made by any person under this chapter 3 of regulation shall include those relating to trading by such persons immediate relatives and by any other person for whom such person takes decision now this this is very clear this means that the disclosure to be made by any person shall include the immediate relatives so definition is already be discussed in uh, first our webinar immediate relatives and by any other person for whom such person taking decision so what is the gist of this particular regulation in order to prevent any abuse in the insider trading regulations the insider as per the this regulation 62 is an under obligation to make the disclosure for all the trades executed not by himself but by his relatives or any other person so the focus insists of the bodies of the immediate relatives and any other person for example say if mr a takes decision for mr b regarding any trading in securities by mr b then a must includes his disclosure on behalf of trading of mr b now this is very subjective and how we have to decide the which persons of categories would fall under this ambit Uh, the word shall here include make it very clear that when a person is required to make a disclosure then when a person is required to make a disclosure for this under regulation when this is he is behave behaving or he is an agent of that particular principal of his person so in 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 a summary we can say that regulation 62 is uh, dealing with the immediate relatives and any other person for whom such person is taking decision now regulation 63 the regulation 63 talks about the 
the trading uh, what shall be included in trading so it's not only the securities but it includes the derivatives so derivatives market is also included in its ambit let's say for future options a contract uh, the notional value and the lot of size is also included in the open interest of derivatives so this uh, uh, summarizes regulation 63 requires the disclosures are made not only for the trading in securities but also for the trading in derivatives now facts accordingly includes the column what i already mentioned is the lot size and open interest and everything is in the form c where in the disclosures regarding trading in derivatives also is captured now one proviso is also included in this provided the trading in derivatives of the securities is permitted by any law not any law for the time being in force so this is however subject to condition as given in this proviso that trading in derivatives is permitted by any law in force of the country and also by the model code of conduct of the company so derivatives of a law of the country and by the company of model code of conduct which sometimes may prohibit their employees in trading in derivatives so you may trade in securities but not in the derivatives so this is a very vast i can say regulation 63 including securities also and the derivatives also yeah. next regulation 64 now what is the timeline to maintain these disclosures this is very important i would say uh, and some confusions also for that the regulation 64 stipulates that disclosure made shall be maintained by the company and the compliance officer for the period of 5 years now this pic regulation is under sebi of course and for sebi listing regulation it stipulates the record of securities law to be maintained permanently or for the 8 years so since the insider trading regulations is also the securities law it is directly obligatory on the company and the compliance officer to maintain all these disclosures received under pit regulation for the period of 8 years so no conflict of interest in between sebi listing regulations and pit regulation though it's maintained by 5 years but sebi listing regulation stipulates for the 8 years so we have to obligate of the company and the officer to maintain this for the 8 years so panelist any views on uh, regulation 6 okay. very important point <clears throat> you know you included any other person so the responsibility responsibility of the designated uh, am i audible yeah very much very much okay the responsibility of the designated person to submit the disclosure under regulation 6 is not only for himself and is relative and relative here generally if we go by the pit regulation is the dependent relative and the spouse but it also extend to any other person now we have seen in the practical life that people claim that you know their parents their siblings or their some of the friends or relatives uh they are not financially dependent on them and they don't take any trading decision for them but in reality what they do is they use for multiple reasons it can be the taxation reason it can be the convenience it can be the you know regulatory restrictions that the people do not take directly what they do is they open the bank uh, sorry dmat account in the name of their relative it can be mother it can be father it can be brother in law anybody and then in all contact detail they will get the detail of the contact their contact number so for example i am holding an account in my friend's name and contact number is mine the address is mine all the details are mine it is just that their aadhar card is linked to that dmat account the bank account is uh, you know linked to their dmat account but again in the bank account also the details are all mine now in that case you know if uh, while uh, you know companies may not get to know and company if they investigate they may never find that such a case uh, and uh, you know the obligation of the designated person in this case but if the sebi investigate there are very fair chance that such people can get caught in the sebi investigation and they can be held responsible for non compliance if they find any dealing in the security of the company through those accounts while person may feel that he is smart he is not using his account and sebi will never be able to know but you know there are artificial intelligence through which sebi has been able to establish that there is a nexus between the account and the company officers while dealing in the security of the company so my suggestion is to be very careful if anybody is using remote accounts for dealing in the security and also advise to the company's designated person to not to use such mean to bypass the regulator 
people do it and we have found it in in, in the systems but is there any you know system by which it can be found out a person you deliberately know, company company will have to rely on the uh, on the uh, employees declaration thing you know unless we investigate there is some suspicion there is some lead mm. there is no way that the company can find out some time it comes out when the person is the only sometimes like how did we how do we identify sometimes the people become the joint account holder in those accounts and first account holder is uh, you know the person who is a friend and this is how we can get to know and there have been the instances even we have experienced but generally if it completely stranger account or father's account and unless the person has shared the detail we won't get to know I want to just add what Ajendra has mentioned is that number one, this uh, the employees of the company, the designated employees, unless until they are chartered accountants and company secretaries, they might not be aware of the legal provisions. So it is the responsibility of the compliance officer as well as of the company secretary to create such awareness. 85 to 90 percent of the cases, what happens is that this awareness creation, pardon my saying, that is not there, I think, across the companies. In fact, one of the CB officials with whom I was discussing about the pit regulations, what that gentleman was mentioning is that, Slakar, why can't you request through your institute to hammer upon this particular issue of creating the awareness across the organization? After that particular day, wherever I talk about pit regulations, I always submit and advise as well as request the compliance officers and the company secretaries to create such awareness. And this awareness is one, it is not uh, that one time awareness is not sufficient. You have to do it periodically, maybe half yearly, once in a half year, you know, once in six months, you have to do that. At the same point of time, it is also important for the company secretaries and the compliance officers to be vigilant as well as diligent. They have to advise their RTS to keep their eyes and ears open. You cannot simply say that, look, I am not responsible. But God forbids if anything happens, it is not only your responsibility as a compliance officer, but it is a question of image of the company also. So what they have to do is the RTA has to keep constantly a watch on the folios pertaining to the designated employees about the moment of the shareholding or moment of the transactions, what are taking place, maybe sometimes based on the PAN numbers, based on the addresses, what they have been given. As Rajendra has mentioned that it is not the names of the persons which are important, it is the addresses, it is the, sometimes the telephone numbers, the PAN numbers, the relationships, so many things are there. So, though one need not be a bloodhound, but maybe to some extent he has to be a watchdog. Because the kind of expectations by the regulators from the compliance officers are increasing day by day. So you have to have your internal controls efficiently as well as effectively to be proactive as far as the compliances of pit regulations are concerned. You cannot have a lackadaisical attitude. You have to be serious about this particular, uh, what's called as a uh, security law which is getting prominence day by day. And especially after SDD, in fact, two, three webinars have taken place where myself as well as Rajendra both were the panelists in two, of course, separate webinars. There, the CB officials expressed their displeasure as far as the compliances are concerned, in particular about SDD. So we need to pull up our socks and we have to understand these regulations very thoroughly. Yeah. Do you think... Uh... The vigil mechanism, if it is effective in the company, may help to some extent? Sir, vigil mechanism may be sometimes you know, that uh, it may be a witch hunting also. So I don't uh, depend that much as far as the vigil mechanism is concerned. No doubt about it. If there is any vigil is blown somewhere. If not, you, you should have your discreetly, you have to take up your job. You don't need to be uh, I mean, perturbed with that whistles and all those things. You know? But as I was mentioning to you, you have to be on a continuous, uh, ex this should be a continuous exercise, not a one time or uh, as and when there is a blow blowing of a whistle is concerned. You study just like your exams, you, know, you, have to you have to continuously have to study, not just before one week or one month before the exams. 
agree but the problem here you know is a little uh, typical situation if the person chose to not to disclose then we have a problem sir as i had mentioned to you the onus of responsibility as rajendra has rightly mentioned that on the person who is making the declarations correct but what i was suggesting is it is not just you know the compliance officer cannot sit back and relax look i don't have any declarations i don't need to worry the way the law is getting evolved and developed you have to be proactive that's what i was trying to bring to the table very right yeah you are right i agree with you yeah thank you yes dr sir yes so moving towards the regulation 7 disclosures by certain persons now 6 is given about the disclosures 7 is by the certain persons that is initial and continual disclosures now this regulation provides for the disclosures by certain persons such as promoters member of promoter group kmps and directors these disclosures are categorized under initial continual disclosures and disclosures by the connected person so 71b 72 and 73 so what initial disclosure initial disclosure says that every person on appointment of a key managerial personnel or a director of the company or becoming a promoter or appointment or getting up or becoming a promoter group uh, 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 in a group shall dispose dispose his holding of securities of the company as on date the, the emphasis on the word is as on date of the appointment or becoming a promoter to the company within 7 days of such appointment or becoming a promoter so regulation initial disclosure is one time disclosure that is you can say pehla pehla and 71 b giving the uh, company to the 7 days such appointment or becoming a promoter now one point uh, here in the guidance note issued by the icsi cleared that even if such directors kmps and promoters does not hold any shares on the date of appointment as a declaration they have to declare their holdings in the declaration as a nil declaration so this is about the continued uh, disclosure now moving towards the continual disclosure if so regulation 72 stipulates that every connect every connected person of the company shall disclose the number of securities acquired or disposed of if he is buying or selling of any securities and if the value of this securities is rupees is more than 10 lakhs in a in any calendar quarter then he has to disclose within two trading days of the receipt of disclosures or from becoming aware of that transaction so it's very clear here that the promoter or member of promoter group designated person or director of the every company shall disclose disclose to the company the number of such securities acquired by him or disposed by him within two trading days and such transaction if the value of securities in traded were in one transaction or a series of transactions then over any calendar quarter aggregates to traded value excess of 10 lakhs such value has to be specified so regulation 72b says that every company shall notify the particulars of such trading to the company and the company to the stock exchange within two trading days of receipt of disclosure or becoming aware of such information so sudhakar sir do you want to add something here So here again, also again, again the same thing. You know that it is the responsibility of the company secretary. No doubt about it. The declaration is to be given by the person concerned whenever that threshold limits are crossing. But you cannot expect, you know, that you are technical people, you know, that suppose you are presidents and who are there, suppose you know, that by manufacturing, marketing, or very senior people who are there, they certainly expect a kind of hand holding by the compliance officer. so it is again the same thing i also take that uh, i mean i reiterate that whatever i have said earlier the compliance officer has to keep a watch on this designated person the moment it is there it is his responsibility to get the form filled in properly get it signed get the declaration 
and you cannot say i am a postman if i get the declaration i will forward it to the stock exchanges otherwise i won't do it you can't say that like that so you, again the same thing that compliance officers ought to be proactive because uh, recently somebody questioned me somebody asked me this thing that his president has uh, i mean you know there was a non compliance from his side and the audit committee has questioned him that why that declarations have not been given and he squarely hold that uh, company secretary and the compliance officers responsible and he said that look at no point of time i have been told what are the do's and what are not the i mean don't know the do's and don'ts how i will come to know then the company secretary said sir at one point of time we made a presentation on the website it is there and all those things so he was telling me as sudhakar what is my responsibility i said bloody you are the responsible person for the non compliance of your senior official you are the person who is responsible the reason being you cannot expect him to go to your website and read all those things and all time and again i say this thing ki that please uh, take care of this thing whenever you are closing your window especially the people wherever i mean the people who normally several people may not even deal in the securities of the company some people may deal so do inform their suppose if the senior officials are there inform their secretaries because most of the time they may depend upon them tell the boss that look this is a window closure nothing is to be done at the same point of time also request those officials to inform their immediate relatives also not to deal with at several times it is also observed that many of us might be having that pms schemes with the uh, i mean i know with with uh, a, a different uh, uh, what's called the organize uh, with the different uh, operators operators of the pms schemes so you have to ensure that your pms uh, operator also is not supposed to deal in the securities of your company so you have to tell him please uh, i mean blacklist my company as far as my pms is concerned so this particular Uh, awareness creation is very important you know rajendra you may like to add something and apart from this you know when we comply with the regulation we come through the interesting experiences how the people goes through different assumptions and you know we have been conducting regular trainings but still people have their own understanding so in one instance one of the person he has he has he has a in fact at that time he had a growing up uh, you know daughter and you always felt that his daughter is still small she grew from school to intermediate to college and one day she decided to with the discussion with her friends that i want to experience the share market so without discussing with father she procured a pen number she procured she had already had aadhar she opened the dmat account and then the discussion happened where should i invest so she said oh my papa is working in this company this is such a good company i should invest here and she invested in the company shares his papa has no clue that his child has grown up her daughter has grown his daughter has grown up and she is now investing in the market so when i when you know in a surveillance system it came out that you know there is a trading in his daughter's account of course he had disclosed her daughter as you know one of the dependent relative so when we explained that is there a trading no i don't have any account my daughter is very small there is some error you check we again checked our record because we believed on him and then we went back and told him that this is the pen number just check and he was shocked that his daughter has traded in the share the trading happened just because he assumed that his daughter is small and it is very important when we go through the technical training sessions with the employee to explain them the examples which can lend them to the problem and i can go on and share the multiple and every time you know i can tell you in every quarter i come across one non compliance i have around 800 employees which are covered employees and their dependent relatives who are covered by the by the pit regulation and one non compliance every quarter and every non compliance is a unique non compliance i can go on to share all these experiences we are trying to fix but i am telling you it's a challenge in real life it's a challenge if you don't investigate if you don't have a surveillance system there is no non compliance until sebi comes up to you but otherwise it's a mammoth task so yeah training is very important sharing the experiences and training on the basics is very important 
and and yes. especially especially in fact you know let me also say that the senior officials who are having this unpublished price sensitive information even they are not supposed to discuss at home say for example my son might be or my daughter might be investment bankers and he is sitting in the same room where i am discussing about the projects of the company or any merger proposals acquisition proposals and all without any kind of inhibition i am discussing in front of them tomorrow god forbids they use this information i had it and not only me i am putting them also in trouble because they are the people who will fall in the definition of insider and i am i am a colluder with them so what i am trying to say is this bit regulations the compliance officers have to understand very thoroughly and at the same point of time create the awareness across the organizations and similarly the sometimes you know about the importance of bit regulations the intermediaries and the fiduciaries they have no clue at all what is happening in fact in the fiduciary level also they have to understand that they have to maintain the sdd they have to create the awareness across the department as far as the clients are concerned it may be pcs firms you might be having you might be dealing with the listed companies and that listed companies information might be shared among the the employees so some companies like you are you know the top four they say that you know kibai you are not supposed to deal in the any of the client shares or whenever you are dealing with you have to give the declarations on monthly basis and of course they are having their own internal control mechanisms so in fact you know one of the pcs you know uh, one of the i mean you know very big pcs firm in india they were just asking me here how to control these things i said put a blanket uh, this thing your employees are not supposed to deal with the client shares that's it simply that is you can you can rest in peace otherwise you know ki bhai it is very very difficult yeah as as rajendra has said that we can go out discuss 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 on as far as these are concerned but it is not to what's called a create a scare or a fear across but just to bring the seriousness to the table in fact you know when i go as a faculty to iod i create that independent directors that independent directorship is nothing less than a booth you know so that booth is to be handled very carefully so people say sometimes sir after listening your lecture you know no one dare to accept the independent directorship i said no that is not the objective objective is when you are taking a deep dive into a pool you should measure the depth of the pool you should understand that without understanding that if you are taking a deep dive there will be definitely a mishap same is the case with pit regulations if you become the compliance officer don't think that merely filing the forms or maintaining the sdd is not your job your job is much beyond that your subordinates can prepare all those things they can maintain it but your job is to create that particular you have to understand the law and you have to make others to understand that law that is very important very right nilesh is asking if a listed company is a subsidiary of one of the private company then what would be the suggestion for the holding company for its employees compliance establish internal controls cover them in the policy correct cover them in don't differentiate between subsidiary holding listed and unlisted just cover them if they have access to any upsi of the listed entity in any case promoter and promoter group is included so promoter included then the directors are included promoter group is included the directors of the group companies are included so you know many people will get included see at and one point of time at one yeah. point of time in relays this question has come up ki bhai suppose in the finance department accounts department secretarial department whom to be uh, made the designated persons some people might be handling some people might not be handling some people might be handling one vertical some other people are handling a different vertical it is very very difficult then you have to put across beyond a particular designation all the people will be covered sometimes they may not be having the upsi sometimes they may be having that but as a compliance officer for you it is very difficult to demarcate and discriminate when you have when you don't have so cover them in the designated persons and they will automatically uh, get into the net and they will be become serious sir yes dr sir please go ahead yes sir 
So some points on the continual disclosures. The regulation further gives the flexibility to the company to fix a lower threshold for disclosures. In case of code of conduct for the insider trading, specifies that threshold for the disclosure shall be rupees five lakh, five lakh rupees, and shall be made by such persons when the traded value of such securities exceeds rupees five lakhs. So in a calendar quarter and not rupees ten lakh. So ten lakh is given in the uh, in the pit regulation, but a company has a some uh, specification it can give in its code of conduct. But it should, however, be borne in mind that the company does not have the freedom to fix the higher threshold limit, say rupees twenty lakhs. So your trading days has been defined to mean the days of stock exchange open for the trading. So just you know, I want to add one point here. In this case, what happened is though the threshold limit is ten lakhs, the company has mentioned the threshold limit as five lakhs for disclosure purpose. Here, in case of a non-compliance, that is an internal code. That's why they don't need to inform the exchanges, and if at all any penal any penalty charge and all also, they don't need to. Uh, I mean, you know, deposit it with SEBI because this is your own internal discipline. This is not as per law. That, but the moment the threshold limit of ten lakhs cross, the non-compliance takes place. Obviously, whatever the regulatory provisions are there, they get triggered. And obviously, you cannot have a threshold limit much beyond what is prescribed. The LDI has actually put up a question when the trading window is actually closed, and at the same time, when the offer is open, as per the letter of the offer. says can a designated person participate in the offer during that period and if so whether the tendering needs to be credited beyond the threshold limit whether the faq mention exempt for buy back but no such categorical mention is there in the offer under sized so this is a question for i think there are certain exceptions to the trading window closures like like right issue open offer etc where the employees can offer the security that carve out has been given and employees you know compliance officer has also been given the power to exempt and allow the people in the genuine case there well, is one specific question is addressed by shalini to you because she is mentioning your name Mm -hmm. Can can you throw light on how you have dealt with the non-compliance under these regulations in terms of penalty reporting to audit committee and SEBI etc. Whether all the non-compliances should be reported? Understood. Yeah. We we, we, Good. we can't Good. teach you know how to handle those non-compliances. <laughs> <laughs> That's what probably Salini wants to understand. <laughs> no, I think. Uh, in in sipla you know we have a standard operating procedure where we have defined what non compliance means what are the categories of non compliance and for each category what is the penalty what is the penalty for first time default what is the penalty for second time default and is there any exception which need to be created what are the cases which need to go to the audit committee so there is a comprehensive sop which has been created that document has been approved by the uh, you know monitoring committee on fit compliance that has been approved by the audit committee and that is fairly published internally in the system so we don't have left any discretion on anybody to decide how to levy the penalty just to give an example if somebody trade in the shares the penalty is one line 5000 rupees on 10% of the value of the security whichever is you know higher now it doesn't give any discretion on me to decide no ambiguity it is just one line suppose if somebody has not taken the pct but has traded 5000 rupees straight away penalty if there is a leakage of the information the case need to be investigated the case need to be brought to the knowledge of the audit committee and we will decide on case to case basis i think the monetary penalty for the leakage of the upsi will be insufficient and then you know the penalties are like suspension cancellation of e shops termination of employment these are severe but this is how we have dealt with this i hope i am able to answer the question and and in case of leakage of 
uh, APSI is concerned, it is to you have the compliance officer is under obligation to inform the exchanges so, and as well as the board SAB also. So yes, in all the cases of non-compliance, there is a procedure where we have to inform the non-compliance in a format which has been prescribed by SEBI to the stock exchanges. Yes, thankfully we never had a case of leakage of UPSI, but yeah, I know we have to report to SEBI. There are investigation obligations, etc. And at the same point of time, despite the fact that the company has penalized the concerned official, SEBI is and stock exchanges are having their own prerogative as far as penalize that particular official. You cannot say for yes. one, one non-compliance, I cannot be punished by two, two times because here there are two separate, uh, what's called as you can say the company and the regulator is punishing it. So even if the company is penalizing, the SEBI will also penalize that particular person depending upon the enormity of the non-compliance. Agilesh is asking one question. Any idea on which grounds the compliance officer can give relax section to the insider with the regard to the provision of the contract rates? With regard to the provision of the contract rates? Yeah. Contract rates. So, you know, initially when we were going through the implementation phase uh, between when I joined in 2017, so 2017 and 2000, till 2018, when we were training to the employees, when there could have been the, you know, the argument of ignorance of the knowledge or the knowledge of the law. We have done that with the simple warning letter. We said that, you know, you were expected to know, you have gone through the training, still you missed it. So this is first time because of the innocence. We, we, you know, leave that employee with the warning letter, but the case is reported to the stock exchange. That has uh, been uh, one uh, time. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, Raja, please go ahead. Yeah, so that, these are some of, this is one example. Then in one example, you know, recently when uh, this pledge of security was, you know, clarified that it is also a trading. And then, you know, stock, ex, uh, you know, stock market also, uh, you know, is now th there are various methods where people can create pledge and de-pledge of the security just by click of a button, people can do it. So the person did not realize that he had pledged the share because he just said that margin money you can release. So he didn't understand this. He just clicked on that. Then he got the money and then there was some process. His shares were de-pledged. He didn't even realize. It came to our notice. It demonstrated it that it was purely ignorance of the law by just click of a button. So, you know, these are the cases where you can say that, okay, this is an innocent mistake. We give a warning to the person. We ask him to especially deactivate all the pledge, you know, systems in his account. And then we leave him with the warning letter. But these are some of the very exceptional situation where we give the exemption. Otherwise, no. And if there's any exemption, then we need to go to the audit committee specifically for, for the exemption. We don't keep a liberty with the management or the company. Yeah, my request to the participants is that please confine your questions only pertaining to the regulation what we are discussing. We are at the disclosures and we are talking about the code and the window closure as well as contract trade and all because uh, let us concentrate only on the particular uh, slides what we are going through. Bala, my request to you is please take up only those questions because next week we have a full-fledged webinar as far as the codes are concerned, no? as code of conduct is concerned. Sure. So, most of the questions pertaining to window closure, contract trade, and other things, we will discuss there only. Okay. And today, let us confine our discussion only to regulation 6789. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Yes. Now, as mentioned by Rajendra, sir, uh, about the pledge, the one here question is, what should be the value of pledge revoke transactions for the purpose of disclosure? It is the market value on the date of pledge revoke transaction or it is the value at which the transaction has been carried out between the pledger and the pledgee. So, for instance, if the pledger has, has availed a loan of... No, I understood your value. question. understood your question. It is the value of the security which is subject of the pledge. Okay. So, its threshold limit is also given in the Chapter 3 of regulations yeah, for correct. the market. Yes. Yeah. So to proceed further with the some uh, landmark case laws for the regulation seven, there has been several cases 
decided by the adjudicating officers at sebi wherein penalties have been levied for the non disclosures or the delayed disclosures under pit regulations now this have been also been upheld by the securities appellate tribunal first case is omkar uh, uh, overseas limited versus sebi here the notice e a champala shankara uh, and the third is uh, subhash chandra agrawal have made the delayed disclosures and violated the provisions of regulations 133 134 13, 13, of pit regulations 92 where they failed to make a true and correct disclosures on time and have thus severely impaired by the integrity of the disclosure system put in place by the regulators and deprived the investors of the significant information at the relevant time so that is the essence here noting for this matter was that requirement of disclosures triggers movement when there is a change spectre of whether it is a gift or a commercial transaction you have to given the disclosures now in the given case in respect of pit regulation since the shares have changed hands like for regardless of the gift now i am talking about the omkar overseas limited there is a time is essence and under pit regulations the notice e held liable for the penalty of rupees 10 lakh so this is the first case for the pit regulation for non disclosures second in the acclaim industries limited against mr abhishek uh, mehta who is the person uh, for who is the notice e and is the managing director of the company who had made the misleading announcements now notice e had knowledge of the company's decisions of the cancellation of merger besides selling shares of reducing his share holdings also notice he has traded in the shares when in possession of upsi with intention to disseminate the information in consideration with the prevailing facts and circumstances of the cases the notice was liable for the monetary penalty for rupees 10 lakhs for his failure to make the required disclosures under provisions of sebi sst regulations so adjudicating uh, uh, officers uh, many of uh, cases we can see here for the uh, pit regulations this is a very famous z media corporation limited case with 35 fps media private limited versus sebi in the matter it was observed that there was a decrease in the shareholding of the promoter due to some equity share of the promoter of the company were invoked by the landers now uh, z media was required to notify to the exchange regarding the trade within two trading days as mentioned and it is becoming uh, aware of the same through the ban post but uh, the company failed to do so and what is the sebi's pronouncement which is by by not making the relevant disclosures on time both notice notices conveniently kept the general investors in dark regarding the change in the shareholding of one promoter now after taking into consideration of the facts of the case sebi has imposed penalty of rupees 6 lakhs on the company and 3 lakhs on the uh, z media company no so uh, i have a question here uh, see sometimes you know i have seen in uh, many companies where you know they make a default in the payment and the uh, bankers you know triggers this uh, uh, you know uh, they, they go in the open market and they sell those shares which has been pledged by the promoters so uh, now whose duty is this you know is it a company which has to uh, notify to the stock exchange or it is the uh, you know the lender who is selling in the open market you know which has to uh, of course you know it has to be company the first primary duty should be of a company but sometimes even the company is unaware about the, the offloading of shares by the uh, you know that bankers now how do you in the situation i think you know this is something very similar where company were not knowing i don't know that can you want to take up yeah yeah, yeah. it is yeah. it amounts to it, it amounts to invocation of pledge and yeah. normally what happens is that whenever the designated person is pledging the shares and that pledge whether at the time of pledging at the time of invocation at the time of revocation all this comes under dealing in securities so it is right. the responsibility of the designated person as and when it is taking place certainly he will come to know about it because without giving notice to him never the invocation will take place because the lender has to give a notice before making that invocation so the moment he comes to know that the invocation of the pledge has happened he has to inform to the company at the same point of time even the company will also come to know from the benpost download 
that there has some dealing has taken place in the securities because of the PAN number, it will throw out definitely. So it is both the responsibility of the company as well as of the designated person. The primary responsibility is of the designated person. Okay. Rajendra, you may add something. No, I'm, I'm waiting if Sarita is going to cover the circulars by SEBI, which says now system-driven disclosures. So if that is covered, probably Atul Sansar will yeah. be question will be answered. Correct. So Correct. let us complete and then Atul, we will come back to your question. Take it, take it, take it. Okay, so 7 CV covered, sir, system uh, disclosures. Okay, and the no. last case here, uh, Veena Rajesh Shah versus SEBI. So we'll like, take this, sir, or we can proceed for uh, Regulation 8. No, so the point is now there is a system driven disclosure where companies are required to inform about the promoter, promoter group, and designated person, their name and PEN number to the depositories, it is NSTL and CDSL. Once a company gives this detail to the NSTL and CDSL, there is a mechanism by which NSTL and CDSL give the detail of movement of securities to the stock exchange. And therefore, if that disclosure is given by the company, I mean, the detail has been shared by the company and NSTL CDSL is giving the information of movement in the security to the stock exchanges, then this is sufficiently covered. And incidentally, the disclosures under 7.2 is not required, at least for the promoter, promoter group, and the employee, designated persons of the company. Where it is required? If the companies have not given the details of the promoter or promoter group to the NSTL CDSN or the designated person. So it is only on those exceptional cases that the external disclosure is required by the designated person or the company to the stock exchanges. So Atul, I hope this answers the question. Now, if the companies are given the details, they don't have to make any disclosure to the public. Thank no, you. no, I'm, I'm clear. I'm clear, Rajendra Bhai. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. But this is very important now. Related, uh, you know, uh, uh, input. There can be two situations. One is a person is singly holding the account, and second is people hold joint account. Now, suppose a DP is holding the account jointly with uh, another person who may be a relative, who may not be the relative. Then, what is the obligation on the disclosure? Right. So if the designated person is the first holder in the joint account, then the detail of the transaction will be, you know, will get reported through NSDL to the stock exchange. And we can take an interpretation that no disclosure is required by the person to the stock exchange. Company disclosure still as per the policy they are required to make. But external disclosure, we can take a decision and interpretation is not required because the number of details are already with NSDL and CDS. But suppose if the designated person or his relative, no, designated person is the second holder and his relative or some stranger is the first holder. And if there is a trading in that account, whether there is an obligation for reporting or not, the answer is yes. In that account, if there is any report, any trading in security, whether it is pledge or it is purchase, sell or gift or anything, then that transaction has to be reported under 7.2 by the employee to the company and by company to the stock exchange. Correct. This is very critical. Many people miss out on this part. Even, even, if, even if the designated employee is the holder or second holder or not, but if there is a dealing in securities by the immediate relatives, even in the system yeah. disclosure scenario also, that declarations are to be given. Because yeah. that immediate relatives uh, band numbers need not be given to the depository, so system-driven disclosures will not take care of that. Very good point. Yeah, I missed that. Yeah, this is very important. Yes, and Rajendra, and, and this complaints, several complaints officers, you know, that they uh, sometimes miss this particular uh, point. I mean, to be honest, I missed it once. <laughs> It didn't occur to me that this is a relative also who is trading. <laughs> he is the relative was the first holder and the dependent you know, designated person was the second holder. So I assumed it is a trading which doesn't require reporting. I had to correct myself, but yes, I agree. These yeah. are the cases we... And this only comes by experience. Okay, this can also happen. Nice to know, Rajendra. <laughs> and we get the uh, advantage of 
Sudhakar's experience and your experience. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Sarita. Yes, yes. So, as mentioned, system-driven disclosures 7-2-C. Now, the flow of events adapted by the system-driven disclosures, uh, we already know that from 2015 to uh, till 2021. Now, SDD extended trading in listing of debt securities mainly uh, so many questions about the debt securities included or not. So, it is effective from 1st July 21. And uh, in the last 13 August 21, exempted the requirement of giving manual disclosures under regulation 72 and 72 B. Now, the procedure of implementation of the system driven disclosures. The listed company will provide a PAN number of the promoters, including a member of promoter group, designated person, and directors to the designated depository within 10 days from the date of circular, that is September 9, 2020. The listed company will provide a DMAT account number of the PAN if the of PAN exempted entities. If the company's entities are exempted by PAN, so DMAT account number has to be provided. And in case of change in details, the listed company should update the designated repository on the same very every same day. Now the designated depository will share the details received from the listed company to the another depository. Based on the details, the depository will tag the DMET account in their depository system at an ISI level and following data with regard to tagged DMAT account will be provided by the depository to the stock exchange. Now, all these points we should have to mention here of market transactions for the entities, corporate actions like bonus, ESOP, right issues for the entities, transmission of shares, transaction of revocation or pledge as we already discussed for the shares and other uh, incumbences, market transfers only in case of pan-exempted entities. So, yes, Rajendra, sir, you want to add here? So, I, you know, it is just for the benefit of the audience. Very interesting, you know, SEBI is still evolving, NSPL, CDSL are still evolving. And we come across the malfunctioning of the system-driven disclosure. Under this system, now if somebody wants to sell or purchase the share, they will not be able to purchase or sell during the trading window closure period. Once it so happened that the trading window was open and it was after a few days that the person sold the shares with due permission, with all compliance, but his account remained frozen in the system, which means NSDL CDS. Impact was that the share could not be delivered for his trading and his transaction was auctioned mm -hmm. and he suffered a huge loss. Of course, that loss was compensated by the depository, but I'm just sharing some of the nuances that we should be aware and whenever somebody wants to trade, especially caution him to check whether the account is a free account or it is a, you know, a locked in account. Very good input, Rajendra, very good input. Because this is really shows, you know, your expert uh, experience. Thank you. No, no, these are all hard experience, actually. No, no, no it is very nice to know. Because you yeah. see, we learn from your experiences. That is the whole purpose. Thank you. Thanks yeah. a lot. Most thank you. Yes, doctor. Yes. Now, moving towards the last uh, seven, three regulations by, for the connected persons. Now, with legislative note is included, any company whose securities are listed on stock exchange may, at its discretion, require any other connected person or class of connected person to make disclosures of holding and trading in securities of the company in such form at such frequency as may be determined by the company in order to monitor the compliance of the regulation. Now, uh, this enabling provision has been included in PIT regulation. This could be applicable to the statutory auditors, team members, and uh, who has possession of UPSI from time to time. You may say consultant, legal uh, uh, consultants, or auditors uh, who advises the company regarding funds raising programs or something, corporate restructuring and everything. 
So this uh, legislative note is uh, very important here and the provisions confirms the discretion of any company to seek such information. So just to mention about the management concerns is also included for if they have the review public uh, UPSI or should make a decision in his trade of the company. And for this form D as per the regulation in which the disclosure shall be maintained can be devised by the company and is normally included in the company's code of conduct. It is mandatory to include the code of conduct. So I think as being a PCS firm, uh, just uh, uh, we make sure all these are very important for us also. Very right. Yes. Uh, so panelists, do you want to add something here? See, basically just to explain this further that uh, say for example, if supply is there and the supply's company secretary or compliance officer wants to keep a track of the deals of the connected persons also, they can also ask for some information which the connected persons have to necessarily submit it to them, whether they may be intermediaries, they may be fiduciaries and all those things. Though, in fact, in, strictly speaking, that though they are not responsible as such to regulate the dealings of the uh, fiduciaries or intermediaries are concerned, but the company certainly wants to uh, also keep a watch on what is happening there. Because sometimes it may so happen that the compliance officer knows that you know the particular person has some upsy with them during that period, whether any dealings are taking place or not. This is what I said that proactiveness is required. That's why 73, if I am not wrong, that uh, scope has been created. So they it is at the discretion of the company. They may ask the corrected persons to furnish some information. Yeah. In fact, uh, though this is a provision which has been incorporated to, to enable the listed entities to cover. But I think it is the most difficult section if somebody wants to implement. It's not easy. And one, uh, you know, many connected person will have their own code of conduct and compliance procedure. Why would they want themselves to subject to your compliance? It is not an obligation on them. So then it becomes a very tricky point between the company and the connected person. The connected person agree and subject themselves to your compliance. Second point is, you know, whether the company should take this obligation. And, uh, I, you know, I know we are running against the time, but again, I will share a very interesting experience. Uh, we were working on a transaction and one of the investor advisor was uh, the, was, you know, he had access to UPSI, so we included in the SDB, in the SDB. And when we were checking the detail, there was one person who opened a bank account, sorry, DMAT account in his good college days, some 25 years back, with his father, and then he forgot that he had an account. Now, the account was with the bank. It, is a, it, it was a prominent bank, one of the leader, leading private sector banks. He was having some 25 CIPLA shares. You know, as the fate would have worked, the person did not pay the maintenance fee after certain reminder at an address which did not exist for the person. The depository participant decided to liquidate the stock. And the liquidation happened exactly during the time when the person was having access to the UPSI. Wow. In our surveillance system, it came out that he has traded and he was shocked. He never had an account. He didn't remember that he had an account. We told him that this is the account you have and this is a dealing of 25 share and he's very, very senior person in, you know, one of the bank who was advising us. Very senior person, you can say. He was shocked that he has paid in the share. Now, what do we do? If we subject him to my code, there will be obligation of reporting, there will be obligation of penalty and then, of course, it will not go in the good way between company and the person. So, it's better to not to do Unless there is a valid reason to, you know, extend the compliance to the connected person, you can get into very, you know, very difficult situation. Correct. I think I will limit my experience as if Sarita will not be able to complete her. No, no, sir. <laughs> no, 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 sir. Experience is only useful. Please. Yes, yes. See, Rajendra so Pai. Is, provision is already given. Objective of this program is to, you know, more of a analyst uh, driven experience you know sharing rather than just you know one way communications mm -hmm. that's what you know people like about this uh, the same so it's no, all sharing we, we can have a part also with the permission of sudhagarji and balaji 
so but then yeah the idea is to you know learn and uh, uh, probably uh, because you know these are all very expensive vegetarians <laughs> yeah somebody must have paid huge fees and you know must have learned so it is always better to you know uh, learn up this way yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rajan, Rajan, there it is very much uh, you will be knowing at this particular point of time we are well over 160 people. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That, sh- that shows well, that shows very really how important of this topic, how importantly they are eager to listen from your experience. Yes, yes. So we very definitely good. definitely want to listen from you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, doctor. Yes. Yeah. Now, moving towards next regulation, Code of Fair Disclosure, Regulation 8. 8 says about the responsibility of Board of Directors and uh, 8.2 requirement of intimate to stock exchange. Now, Regulation 8.1, the Board of Directors of the every company whose securities are listed on a stock exchange shall formulate a uh, formulate and publish its official website a code of practices and the procedure for fair disclosure now quotes we will take on the next week for the upsi and that it would be follow in order to adhere the each of the principles set out in the schedule a to these regulations without without the diluting the provisions of the regulation in any manner so this is very important for the board of directors so code of uh, this code is applicable to the board of directors chief investor uh, relationship officer and what is the intent for this regulation to insert to have the in prompt and uniform disclosure of upsi to avoid the selective disclosures so we cannot have to disclose for the one person and uh, not to the not to the another so this is for the worldwide for the universal and this is given the schedule a now intimate to stock exchange about the code of fair disclosure and amendments there to the exchange is very important here in the uh, regulation 8a and need to be disclosed on the website of the company so this one legislative note is also included in this regulation here i want to discuss this this provide the intention or intent to require every companies whose securities are listed on stock exchange to formulate a stated f- framework and policy for the f- uh, fair disclosures of the event occurrence that could impact the price discovery in the market for his securities. Now, this legislative note also given the principles for the equality to access the information also to the universal and not for the particular person. For example, if uh, those on Dibinton in organic growth person to call of the meetings with analyst publication of the scrum, uh, transcript, such calls and meetings are like set out in the schedule also given in the A. Now, uh, some principles uh, fairly we will discuss uh, in the next webinar all about the schedule A, but some points here I want to discuss for the principles of fair disclosures as mentioned earlier. Prompt disclosure of UPSI, which could have an impact on the price. If prices get impacted, so if disclosure of UPSI is important in the schedule is given. Uniform and equitable disclosure. This is very important to avoid the selective disclosures. So we cannot bifurcate the disclosure from one person to another. That should be the universal to the whole world. Designation of senior officer as a chief investor relation officer to deal with the dissemination of the UPSI. Appropriate and fair response mechanism to handle the market to rumors. If, if the rumors is going in the market, so we have to handle uh, this uh, according to these disclosures appropriate and in a fair manner. Next is ensuring that analyst and research personnel do not get UPSI information. So, for example, if uh, someone doing as an analyst and research personnel in any company, so he may not, we, we can ensure that in our code to be not uh, getting the UPSI information. To make the transcripts of the meeting with analysts available on the website of the company as early as possible after meeting is done and to handle the information need to know basis only and the policy for determination of the legitimate purpose. So uh, panelists, please, you could just throw some light on this. This is very important for the company. In fact, when you talk about this uh, analyst and the research personnel, etc., other things and all, way back, uh, I was working in a company Although regulation was not requiring to have a mandated policy on dissemination of information to the marketplace that time, the company actually formulated an internal policy. Who will be the people who can actually interact with these of the people, etc., and other things and all, other than those these people should not interact 
this sort of the policy was actually in place to take care of the prevention of the PSA. Rajendra, you can share your experience. Because especially it involves the, dis the dissemination no, no, of this, information to the marketplace. Yeah. This, uh, and you know, I think Sudhakar is the best person to give a highlight, but let me just set the context and then I will invite Sudhakar. Regulation 30 and this principle of fair disclosure, code on fair disclosure. I think code of fair disclosure, if I understand correctly, people just copy from an schedule A, put it in the website, and nobody has ever read this code, if I may say, when I interact with the people. And even honestly, I never read it. I mean, I used to read. I know that these are the principles, so I believe that I always know this. Uh, fast forward 2022, there is a famous case which still under, you know, under appeal that Reliance Geo case. We won't discuss the confidence. I mean, so that we won't discuss, um, we won't request you to discuss whatever is not in public domain. But when we see the reported case, it gives a good perspective and good understanding of what does the code mean. There was a question which was discussed in the case that you know there was a leakage of the information in the market and then there was a formal announcement there was a time gap of approximately a month between the leakage and the time you know public disclosure there was no query from the stock exchange but media had widely reported the case there was an impact share price had reacted when the leak happened not i won't say leak happened when the speculation happened there was an impact on the price of the share when the formal announcement was made. The case which SEBI made was that under fair disclosure, if there is, a dis there is a leakage of the information or a selective disclosure, then it is the policy, as per the policy or as per the fair code of conduct, the company should have proactively clarified the news. I don't know how many of us in our normal life will relate it to the code of conduct about the news clarification. And then how beautifully Reliance had argued this thing, that yes, there is an obligation for me to disclose it promptly, but I also have a, a obligation to disclose credible information under principle, uh, what do you say, under, uh, under uh, point number one of the code. And that plea was discussed at length in the in the reliance case ultimately sebi did not agree with the argument they said no there is obligation you can't say that you know i will disclose only when the credible informations are available but you know and the sebi levied the penalty the company has gone into the appeal the case is still subsidized we do not know what is what will be the final outcome but the point which I'm trying to make is that it is very important that we understand what we are writing in the code and how to use that code. It is not a document which is simply cut paste of the schedule one and then uploading on the website. It has an implication. Tomorrow, this can be argued by you in your favor. It can be argued against you by the regulator. Yeah. So that is, if you... Yeah, you have so anything as Rajendra, you have rightly mentioned this mattress subsidies, and then second thing is it was my own company, so I don't want to go into details of that, okay? Because I have just, in fact, done okay, fresh out of the oven. <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> no, no. So let me let me not comment about it. It is not fair on my part, also. But having said that, only thing is that. The determination of unpublished price sensitive information and disclosure. There may be a difference of opinion between the company as well as the regulator is concerned, which is primarily the cause for this reliance case. And it all depends upon by that uh, who will uh, convince whom, whether the regulator convinces the company. Of course, he don't need to convince the company, whether the comp company is able to convince the regulator. Accordingly, the case will be taken care. But only thing is that, yes, when it is going to, how you are going to determine the unpublished price sensitive information, that is primarily the objective of this fair disclosure code. How to determine that? Regulation, then you, are, you have a regulation 30 as far as LODR is concerned, and then you have pit regulations. 
But in fact, at one point of time, whatever the materiality concept of Regulation 30 is there, it was there in, as a part of unpublished prices information definition, which has been removed, and rightly so, according to me. But now again, it is coming back. There is a consultation paper which is there, and they are trying to bring again that Regulation 30 disclosures as a part of your UPSI. It has its own advantages as well as disadvantages. And ultimately, how it is going to take shape. Because see, here, there, again, the same thing will come. You have Schedule A, you have Schedule B. Schedule A is mandatory and Schedule B is discriminatory. Where the discrimination is there, then again, the same issue will come up. The regulator may say, look, you have not disclosed the UPSI. And as far as the company is concerned, it has not even taken the shape of the UPSI to, to disclose to you. So this is going to be there for some time. So as of now, I mean, we may discuss it more when we discuss about the code. In fact, Rajan Singhi is coming uh, next week as the panelist and ITC also had its own struggles as far as uh, this bit regulations are concerned. He may also share his experiences and then let us see that and as far as fair disclosure code is concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, uh, as we are discussing the same, the word promptly has been interpreted for the disclosure uh, as the Reliance case also in the ICICI Bank Limited, Mr. Sandeep Patra in the same matter, the Bank of Rajasthan, the same thing for the Regulation 30 and uh, the events which require disclose must be disclosed as soon as reasonably possible. Again, this is a very subjective. So, not later than 24 hours from the occurrence of event or information. So, word uh, uh, info, uh, promptly is very much uh, inserted in this guidance note for the ICSI. Now, one, uh, as for the guidance note issued by ICSI, again, one thing I want to hear clarify about that, the Chief Investor Relation Officer and his role. So, whether uh, CIRO will also be responsible along with the Compliance Officer for not disseminating the information on, on the non-compliance of, uh, non-disclosure of UPSI. Now, the guidance note is also uh, cleared about the same situation. Uh, panelists, you want to throw some light because this is something related with the compliance officer and with his uh, chief investor relation officer. I think uh, only point is it's very important that there is a formal appointment of chief investor relation officer. Many companies just use loosely this term for many people in the organization that he is IR head, but they don't use the designation. So it, formally, it should be appointed just to dilute the responsibility, legal responsibility on the company secretary. Otherwise, he becomes solely responsible. Yes. And similarly, even when you are appointing the CIRO and as well as the compliance officer is concerned, it is better to make both of them responsible and all because that's otherwise what will happen is there may be a fox pass that uh, CIRO might be thinking that CS will take care of and vice versa. So it is better either you construct the Chinese walls clearly by cut off the responsibilities, but whatever you may say, according to me, at the end of the day, it is the compliance officer who will be overall responsibility rests with him. And because he is the person, the first line of defense as far as the board is concerned. So large, to a large extent, if I am not wrong, that CIRO and CS both, they will be held responsible for certain things. Yeah. Yeah. Now regulation 8.2, requirement to intimate the stock exchange. Now every such code of practices and procedures for fair disclosure of UPSI and every amendment thereto shall be promptly intimated to the stock exchange where the securities are Listed. So we already discussed the same thing and this aim to require the transparent disclosure of the policy formulated under subregulation 1. Now moving towards the code of conduct regulation 9. <laughs> So formulation of code of conduct uh, regulation 9 says that every listed company and the board of directors or heads of the organization of every intermediary and shall ensure the ensure that 
managing director or chief executive officer of the company formulate a code of conduct with their approval to regulate monitor and report trading by its designated person and their immediate relatives of the designated person so a board of directors of the listed companies must ensure that code shall conform to the standards set out in the schedule b of the regulation so in uh, next week we will definitely uh, we'll go through some all these codes and uh, gist is given in regulation 9 that every listed company must ensure that standards set out in schedule b must be included in code of conduct and for schedule c for the intermediary of the regulations now here uh, from the guidance note of sebi dated 24th august i would like to mention one theory whether separate code of conduct can be adopted for the listed company and such intermediary in the group so uh, uh, can you just go through the same sir sorry what is the point so uh, whether some separate code of conduct can be adopted for the listed company and each intermediaries in the group uh, for the this regulation code of conduct yeah no i'm not clear on the question no no i say that i i, I may take with your permission rajendra that it is yeah. like this suppose say, for example if i am a listed company mm -hmm. i might be intermediary also so then what i have to have is i have to have two codes for myself yes. what is as per schedule b for my company which is a listed company and another code is for me as per schedule c as an intermediary mm -hmm. so whenever yes, right. my designated persons are dealing in securities of my company then schedule b will be applicable whenever the designated persons who are dealing as an intermediary then schedule c will be applicable but to a yes, large sir. extent the provisions of the model code if you see to a large extent the provisions are more or less the same the, because the 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 concept and the fundamentals of the code is the same more or less okay yes, yeah. yes. no i agree it it has to have separate code because the scope of both the code is very different broadly the provision will be same like there is a prohibition on dealing in security maintenance of spd etc etc yeah correct okay yeah correct now uh, formulation of code of conduct in the matter of falcon tires limited one very important case case law is here for not having a model code of conduct in the matter of ftl the importance of model code of conduct and that to the compliance with the standard set out in the pit regulation was highlighted the ao has have while leaving a penalty for non maintenance of the code of conduct as stipulated has made the remarks that code of conduct as approved by the board of ftl left the ample scope for misuse of the price sensitive information and hence was detrimental to the interest of shareholders of the company and to the general public also and the order is uh, given uh, as a penalty of rupees 1 crore was imposed on the notice that is ftl company mr pavan kumar ruiya and others so this is very important case for not having the model code of conduct in the company for ftl case now regulation 92 the board of directors or head of the organizations of every other person who is required to handle the upsi in course of business operations shall formulate the code of conduct also so regulation 92 why, why this code is required again is given so upsi flows from the companies to the fiduciaries or the intermediaries now this is uh, again to need to protect such information and that is the purpose to regulate monitor and report of trading their designated person relatives designated person to work the compliance with regulations adopting minimum standard sets at the in schedule c so first is given for the company and for the other fiduciaries in regulation 92 so who are these fiduciaries the professional firms such as auditors accountancy firms law firms analyst insolvency professional entities consultant banks assisting in advising and the listed companies shall collectively referred to as a fiduciary for the purpose of this regulation 
so we may already discussed this point but this is very important under the code of conduct uh, conduct for the regulation 92 to who are the extended fiduciaries and intermediaries the financial auditors and his team secretary auditors cost auditors management and other consultant law firms and all other individual companies body corporate who receives the information and documents from the company for a variety of reasons may he is a client or something performing his role and having the fiduciary and often legal duties of keeping the information that is confidential and not using it or passing to others in fact here also when we talk about the fiduciaries uh, say for example uh, somebody as i was mentioning to you one person asked me the question that it is his company is a pcs form in fact let us take it like this and you know, it is a pcs form is it a fiduciary answer is yes do you need to have the code yes yes provided you are having some listed company as your client if you don't have listed company as your clients there is no point of having a model code of conduct for your companies but if you are having even one single listed company as your client pertaining to that particular company you have to have your own uh, this thing not only that because you have to have your code of conduct you have to also have the sdd because any kind of information if you are receiving any kind of unpublished price sensitive information if you are receiving the company is making an entry you too have to have make an entry whether they make it that or not that is immaterial but if you are in the receiving side if you are received some unpublished price sensitive information who is the person who has received from whom he has received when it was received all those details have to be there in your estate so pcs forms chartered accountant forms law forms all these comes under the definition of fiduciaries and under the pit regulations if they gets attracted they have to have that code as well as the sdd mechanism also so that way the question of not having a code does not arise uh, at all actually they need to have the code and they also need to have the sdd mechanism as required very much because somebody has put up a question to that what Achha, if the okay. fiduciary like uh, auditor do not have the proper code and the software under upsa under section 9 there is no question he not cannot he is supposed to <laughs> okay go ahead sarita yes No, see, I not only say. Uh, I mean, just uh, look. Let me add one more thing also. Suppose, say, for example, uh, all the most of the participants might be having uh, the, the practicing company secretary PCS forms. If you are having listed companies, you have to appoint a compliance officer also. Yeah, that is. So, for your own firm, you have to have a compliance officer. So that sometimes you know that people may question, "Are one listed company client may kaha kaha par matha pechi karega is kabar karna padega apko." It's the same thing, you know. A private company, if it has its debentures listed, it has to comply with. Pit regulations are applicable even to debt listed yeah, companies. Yeah, that is right. So You're right. People were under the wrong impression till recent. In fact, when we were decide what's called as you know drafting the guidance note on pit regulations, what am I saying? Some of the members of that particular thing was not even knowing that debt listed companies. Uh, the pit regulations are applicable to them because debenture is a security let me put an interesting question to the group uh, okay i thought if i'm on mute so i'm just checking okay no no you are you are audible suppose mehta and mehta company is a secretarial consultant or a auditor for somebody and they don't have any other listed company therefore let's assume for the time being that they are not required to have the code otherwise now they are working on a assignment where a unlisted company is considering the acquisition of a listed company correct now the client of mehta and mehta is not a listed company but the project on which mehta and mehta company is working incidentally involve a listed company the question now is whether mehta and mehta is required to have a separate code or not any any view on this dr sarita answer it yes yes <laughs> so we have to have for the safer side and definitely we will uh, have that because it is security is not only listed it is also likely to be listed yes. that is the wording of the regulations regulations 
So it is likely to be listed that falls under mm -hmm. this particular category. So naturally, they have to have. Sir, apart from that thing, you are actually, see, you are a fiduciary. Yes, you are right. Two, you, are receive, you are not only that, but you are receiving the unpublished price sensitive information. Here, what Rajendra has mentioned is they are not going to get uh, come with an IPO. He said that they are acquiring a company. So, that when that acquiring a company and they are actually uh, asking you the your advisory, and in that process, if you are receiving some unpublished price sensitive information, you have to maintain that SDD, you have to make that entries there. So, according to me, since you are falling in the definition of uh, uh, the fiduciary, yes, you have to have model oh. code of conduct, whether you have to have that is different, but SDD definitely you have to have. You need to have model code also. You need you to need have to the have model code of conduct also because in the process what happens is some yes. of the information may be misused by the people. So you need to have the model code of conduct also. What, 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 what I am trying to say is don't wait for your model code of conduct, drafting, approval and all those things. But SDD, first and foremost yeah. thing is yeah. the entry into yeah, yeah, SDD. Yeah, I yeah. yeah, agree with you. It is more important. Yeah, I agree. I agree, sir. Yeah. Another important the, Yeah, there is a question. What if the fiduciary, like auditors, do not have proper code or something? That we answered. That we answered. <laughs> we have discussed and deliberated. Yeah. So, Deepthi, what you have to do is make Dr. Sarita as the compliance officer for him. <laughs> <laughs> he will take care of everything. Yeah. yeah. Now, oh, another oh. interesting situation. A unlisted company is considering acquisition of a listed company. Whether the unlisted company is required to have a code or not. Intermediaries, there's a separate provision now. There's a listed company, unlisted company. So, if very technically we speak, under 9.1, it says the board of directors of a listed company. And therefore, in a strict interpretation, one can say, okay, I will not, I am not required to have any separate code for the company because I am neither a listed company nor uh, I am an intermediate. But as Sudhakar rightly highlighted, there is an obligation for that company who is considering the acquisition to maintain SDD and do the other compliances under the regulation. And it is very important. Many a time, even when the, we are working with the listed company, we ensure all the compliances for our company. We forget that there is another side also, and the counterparty can also be listed. And the transaction can have an impact on the price of the security. And therefore, there can be an obligation for us to maintain SDT to ensure objective compliance of the PIT record. See, let me also say for the benefit of the participants that any person who receives the unpublished price sensitive information, he will fall under the definition, definition of insider. And insider has to comply with the PIT regulations. Please don't think that only it is the designated persons, listed companies, they have to do yes. that. Suppose if you are in the process of any process, if you are connected to the company in whichever the way it is, even if, and you are having access to the unpublished price sensitive information, you will fall under the definition of insider and you have to comply with insider trading regulations wherever it is so required. And as Rajendra has mentioned, this unlisted company, which may be a private company, which may be unlisted closely held public company, but if they have received any unpublished price sensitive information, they fall under the definition of insider and they have to maintain the SDD, certainly. Okay. And SEBI has jurisdiction over you as you because you are the insider. Sometimes people may think that, look, I am not a, a listed company and SEBI has no jurisdiction on me. SEBI certainly has jurisdiction on you because you are an insider. And sometimes you may be a deemed insider also, but uh, rebutting provisions are there, so you should be able to do the rebuttal. That is regulation four. Yes. 
Yeah, Dr. Sarita, please go ahead. Yeah, very interesting and insightful. So, Regulation 9.3, every listed company, intermediary and other persons who are formulating a code of conduct to identify the designate a compliance officer who shall be responsible for the administration of this code of conduct, COC. Now, this is uh, mentioned in the Kirloskar Chigas Private Limited by SEBI in the informal guidance, which is given in the compliance officer reports to the BOD or chairman of the audit committee as the case may be. And the compliance officer has the discretionary power to grant or reject the any pre-clearance after necessary assessment of pit regulation and COC. The compliance officer shall ensure the compliance of the insider trading regulation in the later in spirit and not with any ulterior motive. So here it's uh, the role of compliance officer is very much important as enumerated by the semi informal guidance also in, in regulation three also. So that a designated, a designated compliance officer who shall be responsible for the administration of proper code of conduct. And the next is Identification of the designated employees. Now, employees are also included in this mandate of the regulation 94 uh, in the amendment regulation 2018 is inserted. Now, by virtue of this regulation, the board of directors or head of the organization shall, in consultation with the compliance officer, determine who are their designated person and in search of the organization in person shall be covered in the code of conduct. So, identification on the basis of their roles and function. This is very important in the organization to, uh, to, uh, to access the role and function of under the UPSI. Now, Jade, is, Jade is asking, in the entire PIT regulation 2015, there is a word called the heads of the organization. Means, the owner of a private or a public company, that means heads of the organization is only applicable to the fiduciary. I'm not very clear on this question. I don't know. No, no, see that pit regulations are not applicable only to the companies. Okay, so board of directors, the word, if they use simply it as board of directors, only the companies will have board of directors. And other forms, you know, some LLPs and all, they don't have board of directors. That's why they said heads of the organization. So whichever the uh, that uh, no, the, the board. Okay. So here you know, now, now we have a lot of security like read, invit, etc. Yeah, I don't necessarily that this, these will have only the company structure. That's why if you see in the listing regulations also, they call it as not listed company. They said listed entity. Correct. You know, because the listing regulations are not applicable only to companies. Right. So designated employees included in 94 amendment regulation we already discussed here and uh, this is very important case here in the ITC limited. So this is very interesting. The person who is having a very low profile in the company. So uh, uh, this case is given for the regulation 94. It was alleged that A.K. Chaudhary Notici who was the employed as a head operations education and stationary product strategic business unit at ITC had sold the 5,000 shares of the company in April 2013 for Rs. 15.5 lakhs during the period of closure of trading window, which was not adhered with the model code of conduct of the firm. Now, what order AO has given here, very interesting that the position held by NOTC, who was the head operations, education and stationary product business unit, is very low in chain of the management and would have no interaction with the BOD or would not have the person who whose directions or instructions the board of director or any director would custom to act. So it's not no no one is related with the person A.K. Chaudhary and the board of director is nowhere in connection with the day to day uh, business. Further, AO held that notice being the head of human resources and development competency development was holding a position which was capable of giving direction or instruction to subordinate only, but not to the board of directors. So this is the case for the ITC limited for uh, designated employees identification. Uh, how it is important to who is the uh, employee for the designated. So 
So just anything you want to add here, sir? The designated person's identification is not based upon the seniority or designations. A designated person always is to be demarcated based upon the, of course, no doubt about it, seniority, designations. Apart from that thing, the persons, whether he is having access to the unpublished price sense information or he is, would be having access to the UPSI or he is handling the UPSI as such. That means even a junior person also, suppose in the secretary department, even a junior person also, or in the accounts department, finance department, the junior most people also, if they are handling that, they will they can be demarcated as designated persons. Yeah, in the earlier uh, series when we discussed this, this point was actually elaborated. The identification of the designated person we particularly deliberated also. That time yeah. also we discussed it's a most difficult task to identify the persons. Yes. Yeah. So this is all about the regulation nine forty four. Now we will moving towards the last regulation nine, institutional mechanism for the prevention of insider trading. Now what controls we have to do for this particular regulations. So what is the object of this institutional mechanism for prevention of insider trading? It is to put in place adequate and effective system of internal control and to ensure the compliance with the requirement given it with regulation to prevent the insider trading. So the emphasis on the internal control system, it requires every listed company, intermediaries or fiduciaries to frame the effective system of internal controls to ensure compliance with the requirement under pit regulation with a view to prevent insider trading and its mechanism. So in all GIST says that what is the object for this regulation is the control system, effective internal control system. So Secretary Standard 1 SS1 provides that, for example, agenda setting out business to be transacted at the meeting and notes of agenda shall be given to the directors at least seven days before as we in the, uh, in, in the SS1 given. So unless the article prescribed for the longer time, right? Like in, however, if it is provided that the notes on items of business, which are in the nature of UPSI, may be given at the shorter period of time than the stated about with the consent of majority of directors, which shall include at least one independent director, if any. So for example, if anything related to UPS and don't want to disclose on a longer period of time than with the uh, majority of directors consent and independent director consent, we can do that within a uh, uh, given time of short period of time. So this is the object for regulation 9A. So some uh, establishing effect system for the internal controls and constitutes what are the constitute for controls, everything is given in the regulation 9A. So to proceed further, uh, just wanted to add something uh, about this internal control system by the panelist. It's a, this is the essence of the regulation and essence of the role of the company secretary. You know, what does the administration of the code under 9 means and what does the internal control means we need to understand, right? Uh, it's not sufficient to say that, okay, we have laid down the code. If somebody is coming, asking me for the approval, I will just give the approval or I will decide to not to give the approval and then I will maintain the record. Is that the administration? Or there is something more need to be done. And if you look at Regulation 9A, it cast responsibility on the board of directors. It cast responsibility on the CEO or equivalent position. It cast a responsibility on the company secretary, means compliance officer. And it cast the obligation on the audit committee. And we need to understand that how do we ensure and demonstrate that each of the fiduciary you know, position or the office has been able to discharge its duty. When it comes to the board of director, they say that the CEO shall ensure that there is a code of conduct, there are proper internal control, etc., etc. Now, how do we demonstrate this? That is the key of this. So, you know, like, and everybody can have their own mechanism. What we have done is, and this you can see in the public record as well, our policy is uploaded on the website. We have constituted one, of course, there is a regular, you know, uh, uh, compliance check, etc. that is separate, but we have constituted a committee 
committee monitoring committee on the cit compliances with periodically means generally per every quarter meet and then they discuss whether the coverage is sufficient or it needs some you know review who all should be covered not the individual name but position wise say for example whether finance department shared the department r and d department or board of directors so there are categories and they review the category and within that category they decide okay the coverage is sufficient at this stage then they see that whether the transactions which the people are doing whether these are compliant or not and if there are instances of non compliance how do we ensure that the people are able to there are appropriate training to the people if and then people understand the regulation objectively so there is a continuous push through that likewise on the record maintenance every quarter they seek a confirmation okay sdd has been maintained what are the instances of delay in the entry how many events were classified as a upsi what is the event which has been classified as a upsi should the event be classified as a upsi or not and then you know how we have informed to the nsdl cdsl etc about this. so there is a comprehensive role and responsibility of the monitoring committee the report goes to the audit committee the report goes to the board of directors there is a internal audit on the entire compliance and internal audit independently confirm to the audit committee and the monitoring committee whether there has been a compliance or not the instances of non compliance are regularly reported by the by the compliance officers to the monitoring committee and the audit committee so you know there are a lot of things which you have to done to them do to demonstrate what does the internal control mean how do you monitor the trade how do you identify the instances of non compliance how do you decide investigate the cases of non compliance everything has to be properly documented through sop and record need to be maintained in case tomorrow there is an investigation by cb you should be able to demonstrate and enable the board audit committee your ceo your you know other officers to this to explain that they have been able to discharge their duties effectively as per the provisions of the law very important provision if we understand we should we should be able to protect our you know our board our audit committee and senior management etc if we don't do that we will expose ourselves and we will expose the entire organization and apart from that ayendra whatever you have mentioned one fundamental thing is the compliance officer and the company secretary are insulating themselves by doing this yeah correct because i always say that the moment you take care of interest if you are so selfish obviously you will take care of the interest of the company also so first of all company secretary has to think how i will insulate myself to insulate yourself you have to put proper systems in place the committee what rajendra has suggested it is always better to have the ceo cfo also apart from you as the uh, ceo or cfo also in that committee so that what will happen is the responsibility will be shared and the seriousness will come to the table if you are not doing this and then you are just you know thinking that you are ensuring everything then the, you will be held responsible for a to z you know correct in the on the lighter side i can say put more heads into the nose so that the pressure will be less <laughs> no in fact sudhakar if you know you have a committee you have your ceo on the board you have your chr or like we have head of our hr because we don't know who is joining and who is leaving the organization so it is very important to make him a party of this entire absolutely then your cfo is there who is also incidentally the investor relation head so you cover all the important people nothing can happen outside this group correct correct i agree with you nobody can say i was not aware about the upsi if these four people do not know then nobody knows in the organization no in fact that might be one of the reason why in the listing regulations they have suggested that there should be a committee to determine the materiality of the events under regulation yes. 30 and they have to give their contact numbers email ids and everything so most of the companies they put their ceo cfo and company secretary into that particular committee 
So tomorrow they will not say, Ki, bhai, look, I don't know about this. My company right. secretary takes care of everything. Very right. right. So only thing, only thing is that whenever you are determining, establishing this particular system, the compliances, officers, my advice is you have to be proactive. Visualize that what is going to happen tomorrow and you have to take care of that today. In fact, on the lighter side, I can say that uh, about a few uh, weeks before, somebody asked me about this pit regulations. I always say that pit regulations, even in fact, at the first webinar, I have also said that the same thing. Pit, this UPSI is nothing but handling a fire. So when you are handling the pit regulations, you please take the seriousness as if you are going to handle, handle the fire. So when we are handling the fire, what we do, we keep a fire extinguisher, we keep a first aid box besides us. So then he asked me from where to bring these two. I said, go to M&M, they are going to provide you the fire extinguisher <laughs> and the, <laughs> the first aid box. What else? I mean, jokes apart, what I'm trying to say is ki bhai, that you have to have the in-depth knowledge. Fire extinguisher means what? You have to have the in-depth knowledge. And this first aid box is nothing less than this internal controls. You know? Very right. Yes. But unfortunately, unfortunately, till recently, Rajendra, let me be honest with you, only the top 100 listed company compliance officers might be serious about this. Not others. This is the same view that even the regulator is having that. Even last time also you mentioned actually regarding yes, the sir. functioning yes. of the LCD, the regulator was not uh, very satisfactory in that you said that. Actually. Yeah, because you know that the regulators were short of saying that ki bhai, from 2019, if I am not wrong, the SDD was there. And still people are talking about ki bhai, can I have Excel file and do I need to have the software? Yeah, that is quite cheesed off. What nonsense it is here. Yeah. <laughs> no, in fact, in one of the seminar, you know, uh, ESC and NSC was present. And to their shock, people were calling the SDD. Kya hai? <laughs> okay, I, was, that. I watched that. You were there, Rajendra. You were there in that. I was watching that. And the next webinar, I was there. You are yeah, right. In fact, you know, they got quite cheesed off. And they say that it is made mandatory and you are still talking about Excel file or software. <laughs> very, very upset in fashion. No, no. One thing is very clear, uh, Sudhagar. We need to have an in-depth knowledge. We need to go through the government. We keep updated ourselves. Otherwise, uh, there is no way. That is yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Sarita. Yes, sir. So last some points for just we have 10 minutes left. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, internal control system as you already I think covered all these points in your uh, talk, but I just go through the constitute of con internal controls. So the regulation further stipulates that the internal I control think has been a, you don't need to you don't need to argue. I know, I know, sir. So so Other all things we already discussed. Otherwise, if any questions are there, we may take up because it is already one o'clock. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, uh, all these regulations are responsibility to ensure the compliance and uh, reviewing the uh, uh, body of uh, verifying the compliances. We already covered this. So, Bissell wrote uh, policy for 9A. This is just a one point I mentioned here. So, listed companies shall have the Bissell board policy according to which employees shall be able to report the instances of in any leak of the UPSI. It shall be the responsibility of the company to ensure that all its employees are aware of such policies. This is very important to sum up for the insider trading regulation 9A. So uh, stop insider trading. Uh, we can just uh, through our webinar to uh, educate and sensitize the board of directors, company secretaries and all the intermediaries and fiduciaries to stop this leak and be, uh, be the uh, stop insider trading for all this uh, following the regulations. This is the only motto and purpose of this webinar of Meta and Meta. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Doctor. I thank must you, congratulate you definitely for your extensive homework and lucidity bringing out everything systematically. My appreciation to you.
Thank you, sir. So my uh, PPT was 60, 60 uh, uh, pages, you can say. But I curtail all these things uh, after discussion with you. This yeah, is a yeah. very long thing. We can I, can, I, can, I can make out that. Okay. And you have done extensively a very good job, number one. Number two, Rajendra, I am very much personally thankful to you for sharing your practical experiences. I am really, really delighted. Some of the things which I came to know from today with your practical experience, which you are very kind enough to share with us. Very much excellent. Of course, oh, Sudhagar, think, thank you very much. Sudhagar keeps adding the knowledge always as a good friend of mine. So I will not separately thank him because he is always with me. So, Dipti, I think with this, we can close the session formally. I don't think there is any questions yeah. on there in the question box. Before Dipti conclude, I want to say to the participants is Regulation 9 certainly will have an overlapping in the next webinar where we are going to discuss the schedule ABC. That point of time, whatever the galloping Dr. Sarita has done in the last uh, five minutes, we will have a detailed discussion in the next webinar, which is going to be the last webinar of this series, that is next Saturday. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Rajendra, for your time and sharing Raj, the experience. Raj, Raj, and one minute. Rajendra, yesterday we were talking how many people are going to be there. At the closing time of this time, we are having still 130 people. Yeah. So that wow. shows the that shows the importance that shows the eagerness of caring from the equipment people. You know, honestly, uh, generally when I go in webinar and all, I feel that it, the people are coming more for completing their you know those minimum credit tasks. <laughs> but I'm amazed to see that people are joining here for the knowledge. Not only yes, that, yes. Rajendra, is very you important. Also, you can also see here that a lot of appreciation has actually come. Thanking yes. for the value addition. Well, thank you for the inputs. Excellent things. So many things are there. If we can open the chat box, mm -hmm. you can see continuously there are a lot of appreciation messages are actually coming. I just thought of sharing with you. Yeah. Yeah, over yeah. to, over to Dipti. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Rajendra. I must say that you share the experience, but the, honestly, you accepted certain mistakes done by you, which we <laughs> all do in our uh, professional life. But no, how no, many of us have carried to accept Dipti, in public forum like this? Dipti, That's don't, don't, say, Dipti, don't say mistake. Learning like, experience. This is a learning experience. Yeah, learning experience that only, no? Because see, it's understanding. See, perception, yeah. interpretation, understanding. We learn by this kind of, uh, you know, mistakes, so-called mistakes or lapses. But how many of us openly accept and say, yes, I have done it. And every one of us has done it. So thanks for that and honestly sharing the same with the participants. That's really appreciable. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank and you so much. Thanks, it was Ajinda, actually bye. a privilege that, you know, I could, you know, and thank you, Sudhakar, for pushing me and for inviting me. <laughs> this actually, you know, encouraged me and I could read and then I could come and share and refresh some of my knowledge and memory. But thank you very much, you know, Atul. Uh, you, you joined, yeah. I didn't see you when you joined, but yeah, I realized that you are on the call. No, 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 sorry. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you Rajendra Thank you. being part of our uh, discussion. Thank you, Sudhakarji. Uh, uh, we are always, you know, guiding this. Uh, no, so, so now, since you know, we we have uh, Mr. Sudhakar on the uh, on the, on the list, you know, of, of our panelists. So our number is also grown, like you know, hundred and fifty <laughs> plus. So, and you know, we have a very good, you know, a detailed deliberations and it is more of a sharing experience, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah so we have a, none other than, you know, Sudhagarji with a three decades of experience, all practical yeah. experience and that makes, you know, the discussions very lively. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. Thank you, panelists. Rajendra, we will so push much. you more often then because you are enjoying <laughs> this. We will push you my more pleasure, often. my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, you know, I it is difficult for me to prepare the presentation and then come and have a monologue. But if it is interactive, I am always open for that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you.